Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for joining us with the Crafting Brothers. I have something very interesting for you today. Another cheap miniatures review. I got these on Amazon. They're from Smiling GM. They just popped up on a random uh, search I was doing and I thought I'd give them a shot. They're cheap. You get 40 miniatures for about 25 bucks, which is about 60 cents a mini. Now, that's a cheap miniature in my opinion. So, I'm going to get into these, show you what they're all about, and then stay tuned because afterwards I'm going to actually paint a bunch of them up and show you what they look like painted up. It's going to be fun. So, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and let's get right to it. Thanks. First, let's take a look at this Lizard Man. Now, these, again, might not be the best sculpts, but again, for 60 cents a piece, can you really complain that much? This is a Lizard Man. You could easily paint him up, and I think I'll at the end here, I'll paint up a few of them and show you what they're all about, but paint these guys up and... uh. And usually you use some of these characters in like, you encounter a bunch of lizard men, not just one or two. It can also be used as a kobold as well. Here's kind of a neat little rock monster. Um, you can see there, uh, just a rock monster. I think I'll be one of the ones I paint up. There's a couple different colors of them. Doesn't really matter because I'm going to probably base them both in black. Prime them in black and then paint them up with stone. But those could easily be stone golems or... Or little like, you know, usually stone golems are big, but you can even use these for like smaller ones. Like maybe stone golem minions. That would be kind of cool. So uh, we got those. Now next we got a, these these ones were interesting to me. These were <laughs> little tiny kobolds. And again, these are all in 28 millimeter scale. Seems like a lot of companies right now are just putting out, uh, like they used to make little toys for kids. And now they're figuring out that if they actually put them in scale... Uh, they can appeal to D and D fans. He might be a little too small for me, but uh, anyway, nice little kobold. What else have we got now? This one was interesting, but it was strange to me. This one looks like a uh, almost like a metal hound. It's a hound of some kind, and it definitely can be used, and I'll use it on my table. But I'm not a fan of these angular cuts. This is almost like an anime wolf. It actually works perfect for the rock monsters because rocks are very angular by nature but it does not really work for the wolf for me so that one's not my favorite I don't know I'll try and sand off some of those uh, angular bits and see if we can make that one a little better that'll be one of the ones I paint up maybe at the end of this thing so what else we got um, oh we got the spiders now the spiders are actually they work the spiders will work I'll have to get rid of some of these mold lines but uh the spiders will work. They're definitely in scale of D&D &D for a giant spider. And uh, spiders are very easy to paint up and make them look cool. So, uh, now this one was interesting. This one is like a, a, a snake thing. could even be used as a naga, although the face isn't really naga-like. Um, you know what I'm talking about, the naga giant snake with a, a human head. But it can be used as a... As just a giant snake I think this one will be easy to paint up as well give you a shot of that this one should be easy easy enough to paint up um, and it should look pretty good so I'll definitely paint those up I think that might be the end of them no nope, we got the mouse uh, we have the mouse or the rat and these these actually work um, these they whoever sculpted these did not make them as angular as the wolf the wolf is definitely more angular, but you can see here the rat, not the best sculpt, but rats, uh, giant rats are just supposed to be ugly creatures anyway, so I think I'll, easy to paint. Uh, a lot of these are going to be really easy to paint, just a, a basic paint job with a dry brush of something, they'll be pretty easy. The kobold will be the hardest, maybe I, I won't paint that one, you know me and my painting little bits. So, oh, we have one more here, we have a bird. We have the bird, and this one uh, works for some sort of bird or eagle. Uh, not my favorite out of the bunch, but um, could even maybe not a giant owl, but might work for a giant owl. But uh, definitely work for something. So all in all, for sixty cents a piece, I think you get uh, you get four of each one, and there's ten different ten different things in here. So I think all in all. I think this is kind of a good set. Let me get, let me put them together, and I'll get you guys a, 
a shot of the entire thing all at once with all of them together and then I'll show you what it looked like painted up on the table. Okay, now on to the paint job. First thing I did was hit him with a little black citadel primer. And I just picked out the ones that I wanted to paint. I'm not doing every single one of them. Now I like to stick them with a little poster tack on top of a pill bottle to get a better grip. And I wanted to do this first snake almost like a miniature purple worm. I thought it would be a little neat. So I just gave everything a little purple glaze and then I added a little purple to the white and just gave it a nice little light purple dry brush. As you can see, I think it came out great. Simple, but nice. Now for the rock monster, I was gonna again do simple techniques. So I just used a little bit of brown, dark brown, gray, and light gray. And just dry brushed each one of those layers on there to give it a little dimension. I started with the browns and the grays and then I, at the end I just did a little light gray dry brush on the end and you'll see how nice it looks. It looks really good and it's a very simple technique. There it is all painted up. It looks nice. So now for the wolf. This one with the angular cuts I decided to pull out my Dremel and see what I can do about sanding some of those uh, big angular uh, things down. So I just used my Dremel there and sanded off some of the bits. And you can see the difference between one of the original hounds and one of the ones I sanded up. Now I will go in there and clean up some of those leftover pieces. So after it was primed black, I just gave the whole thing a coat of light gray. Because I wanted that to be the undercoat of the wolf. And then I did a, a dry brush of the dark gray, and then I put brown on top just to give it kind of a brown coat. And I think he came out really cool looking. There it is, simple. Now for the rat. This one was gonna be probably the easiest one of all. I just gave it a dark gray base coat, and then I did a little dry brush of some light gray on top, and I even gave it a little pink tail. And then I gave it a pink nose, and I actually regretted the pink nose. I don't like the pink nose. I tried to take it off after I put it on, but that didn't come off. So I'm stuck with the pink nose. I could always repaint it, but oh well. Now, I wanted to do another snake because I wanted to try this one more like a desert snake. So um, I just gave it a nice coat of uh, light brown, which is kind of a khaki. And then I did a dry brush of a dark brown as well as a black on top and that look at that simple but it looks really cool I think it's ready to go on the table now the spider is another easy one a spider I could just give a black base coat and then paint the butt uh, red and I even painted the little tips of the of the legs red as well and I think it came out great simple but effective now here they are all painted up I think they are ready to go on the table so simple Thanks everyone for watching and we will see you next week with another cool terrain video or review or something cool. Have a good one.